If you want to know more about the planet's past, present and future, the Antarctica is the best place to go. Bon voyage. Early this year, I found myself aboard a Russian research vessel, the academic Shokalsky. Heading towards the coldest, driest, windiest continent in the world, Antarctica. My journey began 13.09 degrees north of the equator in Madras, and involved crossing nine time zones, six checkpoints, three water bodies, and at least as many ecospheres. By the time I actually set foot on Antarctica, I had been traveling over 100 hours, in combination of a car, an aeroplane, and a ship. So, when I stepped on this land, on facing its expansive white landscape, and uninterrupted blue horizon, my first emotion was relief, and a wonder. Wonder at its immensity, its isolation. But mainly, I wondered. How there could ever have been a time, when India and Antarctica, were a part of the same landmass. 650 million years ago, a giant amalgamated southern supercontinent, Gondwana, existed. Centered roughly around the present-day Antarctica, things were quite different, then. Humans had not arrived on the global scene. And the climate was much warmer, hosting a huge variety of flora and fauna. For 500 million years, Gondwana thrived. But around that time, when the dinosaurs were wiped out, and the age of mammals was beginning to come, Gondwana was forced to separate into countries, shaping the globe, as we know today. To visit Antarctica now, is to be a part of that history, to get an understanding, of where we've come from, and also, where we could possibly be heading. It's to understand the significance of Cordilleran folds, and Precambrian granite shields, ozone and carbon, evolution and extinction. Cordilleran folds refer to a mountain range. Precambrian shields are continental shields. When you think about all, that can happen in a million years, it can get pretty mind-boggling. Imagine, India pushing northwards, jamming against Asia, to form the Himalayas. South Africa drifting off, to join North America, opening up the Drake Passage, to create a cold circumpolar current. Keeping Antarctica frigid, desolate, and at the bottom of the world. For a sun-worshipping South Indian like myself, two weeks in a place, where 90% of the Earth's total ice volumes are stored, is a chilling prospect. Not just for my body's circulatory and metabolic functions, but also for the imagination. It's like walking into a giant ping-pong ball, devoid of any human markers, like trees, billboards, buildings. You lose all earthly sense of perspective and time here. The visual scale ranges from the microscopic and the mighty. It ranges from microscopic creatures like midges and mites, to blue whales and icebergs, as big as countries. The largest iceberg recorded, was the size of Belgium. In summers, there is 24-hour sunlight. And ubiquitous silence, makes this place sacred. Ubiquitous means, present everywhere. This silence is disturbed, only by occasional avalanche, or calving ice sheet. Calving means splitting and shedding of ice sheets. It's an immersion. That will force you to place yourself in the context of the Earth's geological history. And for humans, the prognosis is not good. Prognosis means, prediction of future. Human civilizations have been around 12,000 years, that's barely a few seconds on the geological clock. In that short amount of time, we have managed to create quite a ruckus. Carving their dominance over nature, with our villages, towns, cities, megacities. The rapid increase of human population has left us battling with other species, for limited resources. And the constant burning of fossil fuels, has now created a blanket of carbon dioxide around the world. Which is slowly, but surely, increasing the average global temperature. Climate change, is one of the most hotly contestly environmental debates of our time. 
Will the West Antarctic ice sheet melt entirely? Will the Gulf Stream Ocean Current be disrupted? Will it be the end of the world as we know it? Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, Antarctica is a crucial element in this debate. Why? It's the only place in the world which has never sustained human population, and therefore, remains relatively pristine. Pristine means, in the original condition. But more importantly, it holds in its ice cores half-million-year-old carbon records, trapped in its layers of ice. If we want to know the Earth's past, present and future, Antarctica is the best place to go. Students on Ice, the program I was working with, on Shokalski. Academic Shokalski is the ship on which they went to Antarctica. This program does exactly the same, by taking high school students to the ends of the world, and providing them with in-spring educational opportunities, which will help them foster a new understanding, and respect for our planet. It's been in operation for six years now. Headed by a Canadian, Jeff Green. First, he would take celebrities and retired, rich and curiosity seekers, to Antarctica. But he got tired of carting them, because they could give back only in a limited way. But with students on ice, he offers the future generation of policymakers, a life-changing experience at an age, when they're ready to absorb, learn, and most importantly, act. The reason the program has been so successful, is that, it's impossible to go anywhere near the South Pole, and not be affected by it. It's easy to blasé about polar ice caps melting, while sitting in the comfort zone of our respective latitude and longitude. But when you can visibly see glaciers retreating, and ice shelves collapsing, you begin to realize, that the threat of global warming is very real. Antarctica because of her simple ecosystem and lack of biodiversity, is the perfect place to study how little changes in the environment can have big repercussions. Repercussion means influence. Take the microscopic phytoplankton. Those grasses of the sea that nourish and sustain the entire South Ocean's food chain. These single-celled plants use the sun's energy to assimilate carbon and synthesize organic compounds in that wondrous and most important of processes, called photosynthesis. Scientists warn, that a further depletion in the ozone layer, will affect the activities of phytoplankton, which in turn will affect the lives of all the marine animals and birds of the region, and the global carbon cycle. In the parable of phytoplankton, parable means a story, that teaches a lesson. In the parable of phytoplankton, there is a great metaphor for existence, Take care of the small things, and the big things will take care of themselves. My Antarctic experience was full of such epiphanies. Epiphanies mean, a moment when we realize something, that is very important for us. But the best occurred, just short of the Antarctic Circle, at 65.55 degrees south. The academic Shokalski had jammed herself into a thick white stretch of ice between the peninsula and Tadpole Island, which was preventing us from going any further. The captain decided, We will turn around and head back to north, before we will climb down the gangplank and walk on the ocean. So there we were, all 52 of us, kitted out in Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is a waterproof synthetic fabric. Glares, here mean sunglasses. Walking on a complete whiteness, that seemed to spread out forever. Underneath our feet, was a meter thick ice pack, and underneath that, 180 meters of living, breathing, salt water. On the edge, crab eater seals were stretching and sunning themselves, just like what stray dogs do under the shade of a banyan tree. It was nothing short of an epiphany. Everything does indeed, connect. Nine time zones, six checkpoints, three bodies of water, and many ecospheres later. I was still wondering about the beauty of balance in play, on our planet. How would it be, if Antarctica were to become the warm place, that it once used to be? Will we be around to see it? Or would we have gone the way of dinosaurs, mammoths and woolly rhinos? Who's to say? 
But after spending two weeks with a bunch of teenagers, who still have the idealism to save the world, all I can say is that, a lot can happen in a million years. But what a difference a day makes. If we all are together, even a day can make a difference.